the site of the 2022 Junior League Softball World Series. Our third game of the day here on field number one features the second game of the day for the Asia Pacific Region Champions from the Philippines, while the hosts from Washington District 9 from Redmond, Washington, are playing their first game of the day. Glad to have you with us, Troy Clarity here on ESPN+. Plus. Hope we're going to have as much fun as we are here on this show. And for this game, we'll tell you more about how the Philippines fared this morning in a dramatic game against South Carolina. But first, the batting order for the Asia Pacific region. Champs Olarte, Caracas, Cabanera, Balajai, Timban, Palzario, Torre, Buenafe, and Bejas. Your one through nine batters for the Philippines. Three righties, six lefties for the Philippines from Bago City. They will be facing this young lady in the circle for Redmond. Addie Roosh. Roosh for a one-hit shutout in the district semifinal game. Just three games in their district tournament overall. That's all they needed to advance here to the little league, to the Junior League Softball World Series as the hosts of this event. The champions of Washington District 9 and Roosh, a big reason why they are here. The defense behind Roosh, Carter, Viola, and Perez in the outfield from left to right. Enik, Barcolo, Loving Williams, Hendrickson, Saigon, and Roosh in the circle. For Redmond, the young ladies from just four miles down the road here from Kirkland. But they are very happy to be here. Casey Roosh, the manager, says, well, we may be the host, but we're not just here for the festivities. We're here to win this whole thing. And they would love to start off in their stay here in Kirkland, just right down the road, literally next door from their Little League facilities with a win here in the 2022 Junior League Softball World Series. Meanwhile, the Philippines trying to get into the win column after a tough result earlier this morning. Had South Carolina right where they wanted them. Scored one nothing early, but could not hold off South Carolina. Lost in walk-off fashion, two to one. Philippines looking to even things up here and split the day. First pitch, away we go. Philippines and Redmond enjoy the game. Claire Olarte with a leadoff triple in the game this morning against South Carolina. About to face the 1-0 pitch from Roosh. Get back up the middle and Pat Barkalo with into center four base hit. Well, Olarte went one for three with the triple this morning against South Carolina. And has another hit to lead things off here in this one. It's a good solid swing from Olarte. Christine Jane Caracas now the batter for the Philippines. She was actually in the nine spot in this morning's game. Up to number two. Lays down the bunt. It rolls foul. No balls and one strike to Caracas. Caracas puts Ginger in her pocket for games. One ball, no strikes. The bunt bounces back to Roosh. The throw to first a bit high, but handled by Hank Hendrickson. The throw to second is Olarte straight, maybe just a bit too far off. Hendrickson tested her, but she's safe at second. Get the uniform a bit dirty. That's okay. It's softball. It's supposed to get the uniform a bit dirty. Number 17, Jenny Caballera. Moves Olarte over to second. Here's Jenny Cabanera. Caballero went 0 for 3 this morning against South Carolina, but hit two balls very well hit to deep left field. That stayed in the park. Caballero certainly has a pop of a bat. If you were with us for the Philippines game this morning, I mentioned I dropped in on their warm-ups before that first game, and the way that ball sounded coming off her bat, totally different than just about anyone else on the Philippines team. She's got some clout with her bat. I've been thinking about going deep on that last pitch. She swings through the rise ball, one and one. High. 
two and one. It's been a hot one here in the Seattle area for a week. We are still under an excessive heat warning. In fact, 94 degrees in Kirkland as we begin this one. The two one. Thought about it, didn't go for it. Three and one. Very hot playing conditions here today. No shade on the field at all right now. Three balls and one strike. Thought about it. Didn't go for it. She takes ball four. Caballera on board for her first time in this tournament. Leo Malahai. Now the batter for the Philippines. Appeared in a pinch hit roll and walked this morning. With runners at first and second just underway. To left, the dropping foul. Philippines ahead one nothing early in the first game this morning against South Carolina, but maybe ran themselves out of a couple of opportunities for bigger innings early in that game. South Carolina catcher Eason Davis threw out two would-be base stealers. Second, stymied the Philippines a bit, and they never really quite got back on track offensively after that. Swing and a miss, nothing in two, with Roosh changing speeds. No balls, two strikes. Nine outside. Josie Sabunga, the manager of the Philippine squad. Sarah Caracas, assistant coach. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well executed pitch with some movement. One of the nice swings for it brings up Rain Elijah Timba. She went one for two this morning. Down the line, skips off of Enix Glove. And a run scores. Olarte is in. The throw to third dropped. And she is safe there. So a run is in. And two runners are in scoring position. As the Philippines takes an early 1-0 lead. Second straight game of this tournament. The Philippines is up first. That one just skipped off of Enix Glove. Could be backed up quite in time by Barkalo. Easy score for Olarte. And a bit gutsy base running with Caballero ending up at third. Scored a single. So that will be of the RBI variety for Tim Bob. Alfea King Palazzario, who was terrific in the circle. We'll dive deeper into her numbers this morning. Later in the show. Fouled off. Well out of play. One ball and one strike to Palazzario. Everest Park, field number one. 200 feet down the line, 200 to straightaway center. One ball and one strike. Now two and one. Junior League Softball World Series was not contested in either 2020 nor 2021. So for the first time in three years, the world has come back to Kirkland. Well high and outside, three and one. Well, we saw this a little bit, especially during the second game of the day between Michigan and Canada, a game that was handily won by the Central Region champions. But the Canadian pitchers were having a little problem with the grip. Of course, it is in the mid-90s here right now. Your hands are sweaty, maybe a bit more difficult to keep a grip on the ball. Count goes full.
for the safety of our ship. Figure out a way to limit the damage from the Philippines to just one run. Casey Wu, her father and the manager of the squad, says that Addie is intense and all business on the field. They all pitch. Runners at second and third with two outs. One in already for the Philippines. That one's in the air on the infield. Loving Williams makes the catch and retires the side. But it is an RBI single by Reina Elijah Timbon that puts the Philippines ahead with one run and Washington coming to bat. For Asia Pacific in the top of the first inning. One run. Philippines on the board first, but Washington about to grab a bat here in the bottom of the first inning. A look at the lineups for the squad from Redmond, Washington, just next door from Kirkland. It's Barcolo, Loving, Williams, Saigon, Roosh, Perez, Carter, Hendrickson, Ennick, and Viola. In the circle for the Philippines... Alfia Key Palzario, the first she has some business to tend to with her friends, get themselves all hyped up. Infield breaks the huddle. Actually, that's the whole team. Outfield's heading back out to where they were as well, but there she is, number 15, Alfia Key Palzario, who pitched a terrific effort this morning against South Carolina. Through first pitch strike strikes to the first 11 batters that she faced, struck out 10, walked only one had only two full counts all day. The second one came in the bottom of the seventh inning with two out to South Carolina catcher Eason Davis, who just put a chopper over third, the third baseman and into left field. And that ended up being the start of the, the key sequence that led to the game-winning run for South Carolina. But overall, Man, she was throwing strikes, especially early on. South Carolina didn't get anyone on through the first three innings. But you see a few of the, the 10 strikeouts. And of course, it also doesn't hurt when you've got a defense like this that generally played quite well, except for the one play they'd love to have at the very end. Baladai, Bejas, Caracas in the outfield from left to right. Caballera, Olarte, Torre, and Timbad, who combined on that final play, unfortunately, at the end of the game this morning. Buenafe behind the dish, and Paul Zario is in the circle. It was just an unfortunate hit. A ball that was a, a high ball that was carrying to just beyond the first base bag, but a collision between Tim Bob, the first baseman, and Torre, the second baseman, neither of them could come up with the ball. That dropped in, and that allowed the game winning walk off run to score. South Carolina. 1-0 so far in this tournament. Philippines 0-1. Already off to a good start trying to change that around. It's Ainsley Barcolo leading things off for Washington. Swing and a miss. Strike one to Barcolo. Barcolo Dan West is one of the assistant coaches for this team. Her older sister Sydney will participate 
in Thursday's Challenger game. That's a game involving special teams players, and it's always one of the highlights of these Little League World Series tournament events. The 0 1. Upstairs, one ball and one strike. Now, Palsario just went to a full count twice in the game this morning. Mixed up pitches, mixed up speeds. And had South Carolina completely mixed up in the early going, but then South Carolina just a little bit made it made her work a bit. They really get to her a bit midway through the game. One one Barkalo thinks about it. Called strike two. Palzario, who is back with the face gear. She didn't start the first game with face gear. Went about the first four innings or so before putting the face gear on. Now she's not just rocking the face gear, but she's also rocking the shades, too. It's pretty sunny out there. As the sun is now shining directly behind the field and into the players' faces. One and two. Eyeball, two and two. It is a hot sun bearing down on field number one at Everest Park. Shield the eyes, make sure you can see the action. Two and two. And that one just drops down in shallow right for a base hit. Gets past Caracas. Barcolo on her horse and in the second. Barcolo on board to lead things off here in the first. Called a single and an error. It's Barcolo with the, the nice swing that just drops down for the single, but then the error by Caracas in right, allowing Barcolo to take second. Brings up Simone Loving Williams. He hit 500 in the district tournament. Two and two. So Washington does something that it took South Carolina three plus innings to do this morning against Palzario. Let's get on base. Barkerville with the single and then the E9, allowing her advance to second. Swing and miss. One ball and one strike to Loving Williams. Look at the last pitch. And this one was very effective for her, especially in the game this morning. High in the zone, tantalizing the hitters. There's no velocity on it to get past them. One and one. This gets a piece of it. One ball and two strikes now. This Washington team has only played, they only played three games together. And that was in the district tournament, which they swept through. So that being said, most of the girls have played with each other throughout various points in their career. So it's not like they're completely foreign to each other. Got made one and two. So they may not have played a whole lot together as as a team, but certainly groups of these players are certainly well aware of what each of them are capable of. One ball, two strikes. With Barkalo at second, she's at the bottom of your screen. Now two and two. In fact, eight of the players that are on this year's team we're on the squad that made the Little League Softball World Series Regionals last year. Let's look at Casey Roosh. Cheering on the squad. Hoping to get the equalizer here in the bottom of the first. Two and two. Got it. Swing and miss, strike three. Up 
up high in the zone and tailing away from the hitter. That's good stuff. Well done. Rosario clearly not out of the woods just yet with one gone. The runner still at second and Katie Saigon coming to the plate. Saigon certainly a very dangerous player herself, one of the team leaders, one of the most vocal players. Her favorite app is ESPN. We appreciate that. Thank you. Up high for ball one. Rosario threw over 110 pitches this morning against South Carolina. She's ready. And heals the 1-0. Sagan is showing the points. The pitch does go over. Count evens out. One ball and one strike. Sagan also plays soccer competitively. She loved playing water polo, but her summers got too busy with softball. So had to step out of the pool and onto the softball field. Being in the pool sounds kind of nice right about now. One and one. On the outside corner, gets the call. Umpires for this one. Mike Foltz behind the plate. Freddie Martinez at first. Ian Tira at second. And Jeffrey Pratt at third. The Blue Crew, all volunteers. All here on their own dime. And we certainly appreciate all the volunteer workers here at, at this event. It's pretty much all of them, right? Everyone giving their time and their resources and putting on a fantastic event here in Kirkland. One ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss. Two go. This one just tailing away from the hitter. Once again, watch the movement. Nope. Not this time. Addie Roosh about to make her first plate appearance. This game. Got to give a shout out to the music crew here at Everest Park while Palzario was tying her shoe before dealing that strikeout pitch. Started up with a little Maya Adidas from Run DMC. Well done. Nice job. Always love the classics. Outside corner called strike one. That part of the strike zone has been called consistently, at least here in the early going, in a relatively small sample size, as we're still in the bottom of the first inning, but Mike Foltz has not been shy on pulling, pulling ripcord on the outside corner calls. Well, it's one thing to be able to throw with velocity, but check out this location as well. You get a whole lot better than that. Nothing in two. Balls are already. And she deals. Popped up, trying to find it. Bounces off the top of the press box with a distinct thud. And the count remains at nothing and two. Ainsley Barkalo singled and then headed over to second on an error by the Philippines right fielder. But he has stayed there to this point. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Loving Williams and Saiga. There's Barkalo looming beyond Palzari. Yo two. Swing and a miss, strike three. So after the leadoff single in the air, Balzario 
Strikeout, 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 Roosh to close out the first. Find, you can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action and join the conversation with hashtag LLWS. Hard to beat that view from the Space Needle, which is north of downtown Seattle, which you are looking at right now. We're here inside Everest Park. Some fans from the Philippines in the building rooting on their squad, which is up 1-0 as we begin the second inning. Bago City, Philippines. Right now, it is coming up on 9 a.m. on Monday morning. Temperature there right now, by the way, is 84 degrees. So it is warmer here in Kirkland, right now 93, than it is in Bago City. Now, I'm sure there's a slight discrepancy between the humidity levels in between the two places right now. But still, 93 degrees is 93 degrees. It's been a hot one here today. Great to have you with us, no matter where you are watching us from here on ESPN+. Plus. Always a pleasure to bring these events to you. And watch some top quality youth softball. Josie Sabunga taking her place in the third base coach's box. Bongo City, Philippines, population just under 200,000. It's about a 90-minute flight south of Manila, the Negros Occidental Province. The home of historical and natural treasures. A bit up high as Tori has to duck. Get out of the way of that one. Tori 0 for 1 with a walk this morning in South Carolina. That one a bit high in the zone. 2 0. Count to Tori. Philippines national women's softball team had a great run in the 1970s. As Tori backs up off of that one, three and them. Had a great run in the 70s, but declined in the 90s. But trying to make a bit of a comeback, trying to get back in the Olympics mix. A 3-0 from Addy Roosh. Tori walks on four pitches. Of course, the 2020 Summer Games completed last summer in 2021 in Tokyo. 2024 in Paris, I have a feeling we'll be here before we all know it. And after that, 2028 in Los Angeles. On Diana Buenafe. One for two this morning.
Philippines getting the leadoff runner on board for the second time in this game. Still in the early going, because we're in the top of the second. one to Buenafe. Lays down the bunt. Charging Enick. High throw. Skips off of Hendrickson's glove. Torrey heads to third. But tagged out at first. Buenafe straight a bit too far away. She gets called out. Well, you can overrun first. That's fine, but you could you also... Once the ball goes back in, you can't stray too far away. She laid down the bunt and did quite well. And that one went over the head. Yes, you can, you can overrun it. As you look at Wanafe trying to, to reset a bit as she she goes back and then just 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 loses place. Brings up Daniela Bejas, and that one rolls away from Saigon. Bejas 0 for 2 this morning. Clearly an error on the third baseman. For the first baseman, check that. But instead of two on, it's only one. Runner at third with one out. Lips out of Rouge's hand, flies all the way to the backstop, 2-0. Oh. I have a feeling, given the current playing conditions, we are going to see our share of, of those kinds of balls in this one. Canada particularly had a problem gripping the ball earlier today, especially as the weather got warmer this afternoon. Two balls, no strikes. The punt. Gobbled up, and the throw back to third, skips away from Barcolo. Torrey stumbles, and all she can do is head back to third. But a throw squirted away from Barcolo at third, and it appeared for a second that Torrey might have a clear path to home plate. But she stumbled before she could get going. Hank had no play anywhere, had to take it back to third, and then the unfortunate stumble you saw there at the very end. Meanwhile, Bejas ends up taking second in all the excitement. So after all of that, runners at second and third with one out. Back up to the top of the order we go. Claire Olarte smacks that one to center field for a base hit. One run scores. Coming around Bejas, she scores. A two run double. Claire Olarte having herself a big day. It's three nothing. Olarte able to cash in. Another look at it here. Run it up a little bit for Olarte, who's been seeing the ball very well at the plate so far today. That one destined for center field. Ian Tira had to kind of duck out of the way of that one, the second base umpire. But now the Philippines ahead, 3-0, and looking for more with Christine Jane Caracas. Dropped down a sack bunt in the first inning. Hoping to keep it going. 1-0 from Roosh. High and tight. And head to third. Safe. Larte saw a bit of an opening to take third, and she just barely got there. Casey Roosh looks like he is having a chat with third base umpire Jeffrey Pratt just to, just to make sure. Compare some notes, perhaps. And make sure that everyone is is on the same page with, with that call. It was a relatively close throw, but from my eye, 
although Rouge has a closer vantage point than I do. From my eye, everything looked, looked safe. Olarte beating the throw. She was off and running. And the throw. It's slightly hard to tell from, from that vantage point. Seemed okay. Meanwhile, it's now a 3-0 count on Caracas. Runner third with one out. Caracas walks. So now runners at the corners. One out, and perhaps the most powerful bat for the Pil for the Philippines coming to the plate, Jenny Caballero. Caballero walked in the first. Runner going to second. Sagan holds on to it. Didn't want to take a chance. And make the see the runner for the Philippines making the break. And head for home. Meanwhile, cleanly. Caracas in at second. Uncontested. Stands. And the count goes to two balls and one strike. That fan doing his duty and returning the ball. Can't keep the balls here, Kirk. A lot of them. Two balls and one strike. Caballeta. Inside three and one. The third three ball count that Rouge has gone to in this top half of the second inning. Cabaneta walks again. Base is loaded. Layla Baladai will come to the plate, but first. A conference in the circle. Washington tries to limit the damage here in this frame to just two runs. One other game happening right now as we are on field number one. Meanwhile, on field number two, just behind us, the Southwest Region champions from, te from Texas East beating Latin America and Southwest leading Curacao six to nothing. A new pitcher. Coming in for Washington. Her information coming up in just a moment. Philippines up 3 nothing and looking for more.
New pitcher for Washington is Mia Perez. She comes on to try to limit the damage from the Philippines, who scored twice here at the top of the second inning to take a 3-0 lead. Perez broke her wrist earlier in the spring, but was cleared just in time for the district tournament and threw a shutout in the district championship game for Washington. So with Perez, who started the game in right field, now heading to the circle, there's Simone Loving Williams, who started at second base. She replaces Perez in right, and Addie Rouge moves from the circle to second base. Lael Baladai, the batter, with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss at the first pitch from Perez. Rouge goes an inning in the third, obviously still responsible for the three runners on base for the Philippines. Inside. One ball and one strike. Volarte is at third. She had a two-run double. Caracas and Cabanera at second and first, respectively. They both walked. Swing and a miss, one and two. Big strikeout as Perez reaches back and gets Baladai to swing and miss. Well done. Two gone. And Elijah Timbot with an RBI single in the first. Hoping to add to her portfolio in this game, in this plate appearance. Outside, 1-0. Tip uh, two for three overall in this tournament so far. Put this one in the air to shallow center field. Coming in and making the catch. Viola makes the grab. Side retired. Washington fans happy. But the Philippines with two more runs as they take a 3-0 lead to the bottom of the second. Well, those fans didn't have too far to come to watch their team play. Those are the fans from Redmond, Washington, just about four more miles away from where we are in Kirkland. Their squad currently down 3-0 to the Philippines, who came almost 7,000 miles to get here. So the team that came the furthest versus the team that just had a quick, short, hot drive to get here, Everest Park. Great to have you with us, bottom second, about to begin. Troy Clarity here on ESPN+. Plus. Alfea Key Palzario gave up the leadoff single to Ainsley Barcolo, but then really shut it down from there. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back strikeouts 
to end the home half of the first. First batter she faces here in the second is Mia Perez. We've seen Mia in right. We've seen her in the circle, and now we see her at the plate. Takes the first pitch up high for ball one. Both of Mia's parents work at Microsoft. Her mom, Megan, the general manager there. Her dad, Gus, is a director of development. Microsoft's headquarters, of course, in Redmond. Nintendo's there, too. It's sharply, and now actually got into the dugout. Heads up down there. Everyone okay? Josie Sabunga with a smile on her face. Okay, I'm awake now. Not that she was asleep before. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Redmond, the home of Microsoft, Nintendo, Kirkland, which is where we are now, used to be the home of Costco. The headquarters has since moved to Issaquah, which is also on the east side of the Seattle metro area. But when you're getting Kirkland signature brand stuff, well, that's that's what they're referencing here. Two balls and one strike. It's a piece of it, two and two. So if you walk into Costco just to get an item or two with the Kirkland signature brand on it, that's where the Kirkland comes from. Then again, no one, well, at least you might walk into Costco thinking you might get one or two items, but then you're walking back to your car with two full carts. Trying to figure out how to explain to your spouse how you spent the day. Two and two. Inside, not called. Full count. Palzario with three strikeouts already today. Ten this morning against South Carolina versus just one walk. Only went to two full counts this morning. Is there here in the second inning of this one? Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Fourth strikeout in a row, all swinging. As Palzario dials up another one, and, and this has been her best pitch all day today. A tail and rise ball, with a little bit of action to it. Here's Ella Carter. Palzario is making sure everyone is where they need to be. You good, you good. All right, let's rock. First pitch to Carter. Outside corner called, strike one. Carter's sister, Michaela, is a starting outfielder for Fordham. Strikes to Carter, who Casey Roosh, the manager, says has been the most improved player over the last year. Went from a super sub and now in the starting lineup this year. And this is a team that is, is down one of its better players. Julia Cady hurt it, hurt her knee during the regular season while sliding into home. Cady, an outfielder, and that caused a bit of a shuffle, especially in the outfield. She had been the, the center fielder for Washington. So that caused some, some shuffling around of the, the pieces of the puzzle. But the outfielders have certainly worked hard the last couple of weeks to help pick up the slack that, that Katie certainly provided in the outfield. It's been Carter, Viola, Perez, and Loving Williams. We've seen four different outfielders already in the game for Washington. Time I call momentarily as the center fielder for the Philippines, Bejas, had to tie her shoe. Two and one, the count to Carter. A bit high, three and one.
ready with the rally gear in the Washington dugout. Three and one. Now to count three and two. As Carter tried to go low to get it, Palzario able to sneak it beyond. Let's take another look. You know, much of Palzario's best work has been done high in the zone. Here, gets Carter swinging to the low one. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch from Palzario. High. Ball four. So after four straight strikeouts, Carter reaches base. Here's Regan Hendrickson coming to the plate for Washington. As everyone gets on the same page in the Philippines infield, there's Regan. Her favorite movie? Major League. That was actually on TV yesterday when I was back home in the Bay Area, so... Of course, I'll flip through the channels, and of course, the remote start there. I had to, had to keep watching. That pitch is called on the outside corner for strike one. A lot of memorable lines from Major League. No balls or one strike. That one is called on the outside corner. Haven't seen that pitch from Palzario so far in the second inning. We saw a lot of it in the first. And it was called with regularity, that outside corner. Palzario finally going back there. No balls and two strikes to Regan Hendrickson. And was sharply hit into left field. Hendricks in the board. Time run is on. Carter in second. And there's Hendricks in the first. Brings up Maggie Enich. Maggie's older sister Sarah is on the team. While her younger sister, Ella, was in the Junior Regionals last year. Now we have a mountain visit from Josie Sabunga. A look at the mountain visit rules. You get two in an inning, three in a game. I'm trying to make a change in offense or defense, it does does not count as a visit. So Palzario with her second walk of the day issued only one this morning against South Carolina. And it swings, fouls it off into the Redmond reading section. No balls and one strike. And that one is playable. Olarte calls everyone off. Two go. Olarte had that one the whole way. I'm not even sure that she even moved her feet. She moved her arms. You tell everyone else, hey, to back off. I got this. And now there are two gone. Still two on. Carter at second, Hendricks in first, and Lily Viola at the plate. Swing and miss. Strike one. Viola's role model. She looks up to her older sister, Sophia. 
says that she rocked the pitching circle. The ball is one strike. Outside, too far outside. One ball and one strike. Viola hit from the left side of the plate. Got a kick out of the, the rally gear. We've already shown you a couple of shots from the rally gear from the players in the, the Washington dugout, the Sailors hat, and the Cubs over the years. Part of what makes this game so much fun. One and one. That goes over for a call strike two. I remember watching the softball regionals in, on the college level in Oregon State. I don't know how they did this, but they took some cups and they fashioned them into an announcer's headset. And there were two of the players. That's right, get the cups ready. And there were two of the Oregon State players who were kind of calling the game in the dugout with the cups over their ears like a headset. Really cool. On a couple of hops to second, or the first, 40 out. Washington gets two on, but can't push either of them across. Philippines 3 0 lead is preserved as we head to the start of the third inning. Nice defense to end it for Philippines. Well, if you want to play Little League baseball or softball, it's easy. Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League program near you. Good day to be out on the lake. You see downtown Seattle off in the distance. We're on the east side of Lake Washington. 3-0 our score. Philippines on top after two innings of play. And already a trend establishing itself in this game that we might need to keep an eye on. Runners left on base. Philippines left two in the first. Left them loaded in the second. So five left on base early going. Meanwhile, Washington trying to rally. They left two on in the second inning. So we may need to keep an eye on that. Washington's left three on base all told. Mafia Key Palzario leading off here in the third inning. Fouls off the first pitch she sees from Mia Perez, who came on to relieve Addie Roosh. Top of the second inning. Tries a floater. Doesn't get the outside corner called. Count goes to one ball and one strike. Perez has learned a lot about pitching. How to hit corners and throw different pitches. Popped up. Right side of the infield. Hendrickson, one gun. Here's Princess Maisie Torre, who walked and scored in the second. In fact, that walk in the second inning let off that frame. Later, came around to score on a two-run double by Claire Olarte. Pitch from Perez. Backs 
away from it. Goes over for a called strike. Torrey about to face the 0-2 pitch. The 0-2 up high, now one ball and two strikes to Torrey. Perez in the circle. With some clean looking shades. One ball, two strikes. When it's hit pass, and it should end the left field for a base hit. Tori with the inside out swing, and her first base hit of this tournament. Take a smile, Princess. She went down and got that one. Inside out swing on the low pitch. When it pass, and it should end the left field for the base hit. On a one two pitch. Impressive piece of hitting there by Princess Maisie Tori. On Diana Buenetham. Reached on an error, puts this one in play, trying to get the handle on it before the second for one, too high. So they do get the, the lead runner at second. So Barcolo looked like she had a, maybe took a little bit of time to, to get the transfer, but finally did, was able to get at least one out. Andy Roosh was able to record it at second. So the fielder's choice brings up Daniela Bejos. She reached on the fielder's choice and later came around to score. I mentioned the runners left on base in this game. Another trend has been errors. Five of them combined for both teams. One by the Philippines, four for Washington. The 1-0. Changing speeds, swing and a miss, one and one. Look at this pitch. Ooh. Tailed away a bit from Bayhouse. One ball, one strike. Chopper, pass Enich to Barcolo, but can't find it in time. Trying to transfer, but just couldn't get the ball out of the glove. So now runners at first and second with two out. And back up to the top of the order we go, Claire Olarte, who has been magnificent at the plate today. Hits this one in the air to right center field. That drops down for Olarte's third base hit of the day. Scoring one. And scoring two more. The Philippines ahead 5-0. Claire Olarte with the single in the first, a two-run double in the second, and adding another two-run double here in the third. She just went up and got that one. And as soon as you saw where the trajectory of the ball was headed, you knew it was going to be trouble. Riola couldn't get there in time and center. Neither could Loving Williams and right. And two more come across. Boy, Olarte has been super impressive. She ends up all the way over third. So Christine Jane Caracas walked in the second inning. Now the batter. That one gets down for a base hit. Alarte scores. Six nothing Philippines. And the big innings that eluded the Philippines this morning against South Carolina are coming this afternoon against Washington. Just reached out for that one. Nice piece of hitting there, Caballero. Rolls one to first, and the side is retired. 
but the Philippines just keeps adding runs. Three more. The big blow, a two-run triple for Claire Olarte. Six-nothing Philippines. Well, if you're into social media, and of course it's 2022, of course you are. You can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action and join the conversation with hashtag LLWS. And the Little League social media team just does a tremendous and fantastic job keeping track of everything, posting highlights, really cool stuff. I'm sure they've and their hands full get stuff from Kirkland, Washington here all day. It's been a busy day. That's right, grab your phones, check it out. At Little League, use the hashtag LLWS. Oh, the youngsters and their phones. Six nothing, Redmond is currently down to the Philippines. Philippines looking a lot more cohesive, at least more consistently here so far this afternoon. And did this morning, got to a great start early lead but could not hang on to it just could not sustain the, the early momentum South Carolina came up and got him in the seventh inning Washington going to work top of the order Ainsley Barkalo Barkalo single and advanced to second on an error Alzario deals the first pitch high for ball one to Barcolo. Second game of the day for the Philippines. They have tomorrow off. They're back at it on Tuesday against Canada. And on Wednesday, the Central Region champs from Michigan. And after that, we go into the elimination side of play. Call strike one. Start off in pool play. Ten teams are here. Split up into two different pools, Pool A and Pool B. This is a Pool A matchup. For the first four days, it's round robin action. Everybody in each respective pool plays each other. Tries to position themselves in the elimination bracket or for the elimination bracket as best that they possibly can. Of course, it all leads up to the championship game coming up on Saturday. That game's going to be on the, on the deuce on ESPN2. Two. two balls and one strike. And this is inside three and one. So Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have to do some math on Filipino time. Closer look at how things work in pool play. It's after a pool play can, can
concludes then the top eight play in the single elimination tournament. You are seeded based on your pool play record, so every game counts. The 3-1. Now to count four. Rosario stepping back on to the rubber. And the 3 2 pitch. Fouled off. Back to the screen. After this game, Washington plays Canada tomorrow. The Canadian team took one on the chin against Michigan. 15 2 was that final earlier today. Then Washington faces Michigan. Tuesday, and then the Southeast Region champs from Irmo, South Carolina on Wednesday. Payoff pitch in the air to the right field and grabbed by Caracas. Nice battle between Palzario and Barcolo, but Palzario wins it. Much to the delight of the Philippines dugout. Well done by Steve Jane Caracas. Pitchers always appreciate when defense plays well behind you. Simone Loving Williams is now the batter for Washington. Struck out in the first. Swing and a miss, strike one. Simone's dad, John, is a coach on the team. She is a big University of Washington softball fan. Certainly one of the premier teams in the Pac-12, which is just a gauntlet to run. Probably top to better, the, bottom, the best conference in softball. That one goes over, floater. Nothing in two to count to Loving Williams. Let's take a look at this again. Just floats right down the middle. Evan Williams took it. The 0-2. That one popped up. Palzario has the catch. She makes it just outside the circle. Two away. He feels sharing a laugh and a smile. And now it's back to work. Washington dugout maybe looking for a little bit of energy right now. Katie Seigen struck out in the first. Seigen's role model is a family friend. Her name's Taylor Fitch, who has committed to Loyola Marymount University down in LA. And Taylor gave her catching lessons and is the older sister that Katie never had. So she wanted to be sure that we here on the broadcast side gave Taylor a shout out. Our pleasure. That could drop, and it does. Fair ball. That one squirts all the way back home, but not far enough away for Sagan to think about taking second. So the inning extended, a single by Sagan. Addy Roosh about to step up to the plate for Washington. Struck out to end the first. Swing and a miss. Strike one on the rise ball. That one had a little smoke on it too. Watch this. Zip.
you love pitching, you probably love that pitch. Paul Zaro is certainly reared back and dealt some beauties throughout the course of the day. No balls, one strike. Iron outside, one and one. Two games going on concurrently here in Kirkland. Say that three times fast, you're watching one of them. The other one is happening on Field 2, right behind us. The Southwest Region Champs from West Columbia, Texas. Leading Curacao from the Latin America region. That's a 12-0 game in the top of the fifth. Curacao lost 18 to nothing earlier today. Up high, two and one. Curacao dropping that 18 nothing result to the West Region champs from Nevada. Also earlier today, Connecticut knocked off the Czech Republic 11-0. Two balls, one strike. For the runner at first and two outs. Throw down to second, not in time. Katie Sagan, according to Washington manager Casey Roosh, is a five-tool player. Speed, throwing, fielding, hitting for average, and hitting for power. We saw the speed on that sequence. So she takes 60 feet. She's in scoring position. And Roosh bring her in. Definitely need to here. She looks at ball four. So with two out, the single by Saigon, and then the walk by Roosh. Next up, for Washington, this is and another mount visit from Josie Sabunga. Second mount visit of the game to Palzario. One run in the first, two more in the second, and three in the third for the Philippines. Washington has come close, but still looking for their first run of this game. Paul Zario has thrown 165 pitches today. Pitch number 166 forthcoming to Mia Perez, who struck out to begin the second inning. That's a high for ball one. Ball and no strikes to Perez. Floats right down the middle. One ball and one strike. So really, to this point, only one game played so far has contained the drama. That was the game this morning between South Carolina and the Philippines. South Carolina winning in walk-off fashion bottom of the seventh inning. All the others, to this point, have been very decisive wins for their respective victors. Two and one, the count goes to Perez. Now, we'll see about this one. Philippines ahead 6-0, but Washington with two on and two out. And the chance to get closer to the Philippines here. So this one, still in question. Long way to go. 2 1. Swings and misses. 2 and 2 the count. Perez stepping back in. Two balls and two strikes. Two on and two out. Thought about it, didn't go. 
Full count. It's a good take from Perez. Ooh, awesome games being played at second. Alzario chasing Saigon back there. Saigon singled and later stole second. Addie Roosh at first, she walked. The 3 2 pitch. Got it. Big strikeout for Palzario ends the inning. And once again, Washington leaves two on. Palzario reaching back and dealing another big K. 6 0 Philippines after three. That's the flag of Washington State. Right now, it's the Philippines ahead 6-0. We head to the start of the fourth inning. Cooling off just a little bit here in Kirkland. You see the shadows starting to lengthen, especially on the right side of the infield. It was 94 degrees when we began this game. But right now, we are Looking at 92 degrees, so a two degree cool off since the start of this one. The Philippines have not cooled off. In fact, they've gotten hotter as this game has gone along. One in the first, two in the second, three in the third. Leo Baladai starting things off for the Philippines here in the fourth. She has struck out twice. She was actually the first batter that Mia Perez faced when Perez came into the circle to replace Addie Roosh in the second inning. Roosh going an inning in the third. In front of that one, fouled off, nothing at two. Well, six games being played here today. This is the sixth of six games. Four games being played tomorrow. Starting off with the same Washington squad facing Canada at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. And at 11 a.m. on this field, it'll be the Southwest Region Champions from Texas East, meeting the Europe Africa Region Champions from the Czech Republic. I think it's going at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Michigan versus South Carolina at 1.30 p.m. Pacific. Inside corner, called strike three. Perez with her second strikeout of the day. And I don't think Baladai was expecting this one at all. Even backed up off of it a bit. I got the inside corner called from Mike Foltz. Rain Elijah Timbod with an RBI single in the first. And flew out to center in the second. 
So Washington, Canada. Texas East versus the Czech Republic. Michigan versus South Carolina. And the fourth of four games to be played tomorrow, Connecticut versus Nevada. That could be very intriguing. Tim Bond well in front of that one. Nothing in two. So Connecticut versus Nevada, that will wrap things up for us here tomorrow. That will be a 2 p.m. Pacific time first pitch. Of course, we've got all those games here for you on ESPN+. Plus. The 0-2 pitch. Got it. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Baladai looking, and now Timbaugh swinging. And when Mia Perez says she's learning more and more how to hit corners and throw different pitches, you're, you're seeing that right here, so far in the top of the fourth. But Palzario smacks that one to left, base hit. Eighth hit of this game for the Philippines. First one by Palzario. Now one for three. It's a Princess Maisie Torre. Walked and scored in the second. Single, it was a race on the fielder's choice in the third. Bounces, Palzario going. The throw not in time. Rosario now at second. <laughs> Tries to frame it and gets the outside corner call. One ball, one strike. Boy, a catcher can really be a pitcher's best friend. Lady Sagan with a terrific job of framing that one. Chopper to short. Barcolo to first, not in time, safe. Go over the third, sports through the wickets, and Balzario comes around to score. Seven, nothing Philippines. And the fifth error committed by Washington. The infield single by Torre. And the error on the errant throw by the first baseman Hendrickson, allowing Palzario to score. That one bounces foul out of play. Let's take a, another look at it. As the throw just off target, and bouncing, bouncing beyond Edich at third base. On Diana Buenafa. Fouls that one off. That's one of the farther hit balls that we've seen here today. No balls have, have gone over the fence, at least here on field one. I'm not exactly sure how things have gone on, on field two, but everyone has, has stayed in the yard. The 0 2. Early on that one. And a heads up down there. Certainly appreciate our camera crew hanging in there, fighting off the heat, fighting off foul balls as well. The 0-2. That one is smacked for a base hit. Well, that one was timed a bit better. Uh, that one trickles to the catcher, and Bonafe takes second. Well, some really good swings by Buenafa, but just a bit early on the first couple of pitches. Not so much here on this one. Well-timed, able to put that one into left field for a base hit. <laughs> Philippines have scored in every inning so far. And they'll score more here with one coming across and another coming across two runs come through
three runs so far for the Philippines in the top half of the fourth. Nine, nothing. A two run single by Bejas. Pretty easy swing. And keep in mind, this is all with two outs. As this inning began innocently enough, at least for Washington anyway, with back-to-back -back strikeouts. And Perez appeared to be settling things down with some terrific pitches. But since then, Balzario whipped a first pitch single. But later came around to score. And now, four straight singles for the Philippines. Back up to the top of the order we go, and here has been a very dangerous young lady, Claire Olarte. Single, double, triple. Four driven in, and two runs scored. So this is an unenviable position to be in if you're Washington with the Philippines discovering a batting stroke with two outs, and this young lady Putting one into the air, shallow center, skips off of Barcolo's glove. Olarte ends up at second. Stop me if you've seen this before, Olarte on base. This time via the error from Barcolo. Runners at second and third. As the Philippines just keeps it right on going. As Caracas almost lost her footing trying to back out of the way of that pitch. One ball and no strikes to Caracas. Side. And this game may be starting to spin a little bit for Washington. Two and up. Oh. Fouled off. Two and one. Six errors committed by Washington in this one. Six. But the Philippines have hustled as well as they've wrapped out 11 base hits. The last five have reached. Good contact there, but fouled off. Count moves to two balls and two strikes on Christine Jane Caracas. Wants to be a teacher. Always noble. We need teachers. Now more than ever. Two balls, two strikes. Two on and two out. High in the air, left center field, and Carter hangs on to it to retire the side. But the Philippines add three more runs, a two-run single by Bejas, the biggest hit. Nine, nothing, Philippines in control.
Little League Sandlot Fun Days is a player-led, unstructured opportunity for local Little League programs to provide a fun activity for baseball and softball players. Kids make the rules, make the lineups, and make the calls. Give them the bats, balls, and field, and let them play. Learn more today at littleleague.org slash sandlot fun days. Umpires having a good time here. They were dancing to YMCA during the half inning break. Nine nothing, the Philippines have scored in every inning so far in this game. And a new pitcher for the Philippines, Leo Baladai. Our first chance to see her in the circle. And she replaces Alfia K. Palzario. Who maybe not quite as efficient as she was this morning against South Carolina, but still threw up zeros in three innings of work, did Palzario. And she struck out five batters along the way, issuing just two walks. And not really allowing Washington to get much of anything. Washington with opportunities, but couldn't get anything across. Leaving two on in the second, and then two more on in the third. Palzario, who started in the circle, is now in left field. So just a straight switch between the two as Baladai had started in left field but is now in the circle. And now Palzario, who started in the circle, is now in left. And now batting for District 9, number 16, Sarah Ennett. Boy, what fun that young lady has been to watch in the circle so far. Bottom fourth. Baladai about to deal her first pitch of the day. As that one travels outside. Called outside for ball one. It is Sarah Enich in a pinch hit roll. In Ella Carter's spot. Enich, one of the substitutes for Washington. That one is a high strike called. Sarah and her younger sister Maggie on the team. Sarah's favorite food is lasagna, while Maggie's favorite food is cucumbers. Ugh. Team lasagna all the way on that one. Two balls and one strike to Sarah Enich. Baladai stepping back in, foot on the rubber, and off she goes. That one tailed outside, but too far out of the zone. Two and one, now goes to three and one. Washington with four subs available to them. They have five subs, but Julia Cady is injured. We told you her story earlier in the show. Megan Conley, Savannah Stairs, and Zoe Cooper also available to play. And we will see them at some point in this game. Count goes full to Enich. And apologize, showing some stuff in the circle on that pitch. Watch the movement here in particular. Even tough. Now pitch, low and inside, ball four. So Enich with the pinch hit walk. And getting base runners on hasn't been the issue for Washington. Pushing them across has been. Five batters left on base so far in this one for Washington. Regan Hendrickson, the batter for Washington now. She's singled back in the second. High and outside for ball one. It's gone final over on field two. Southwest 
run ruling Latin America, 12 to the final in five innings. Big six run fourth inning for the young ladies from West Columbia, Texas. Inside corner called strike one. Casey Rouge calls Regan Hendrickson the team's most reliable hitter. One ball, one strike. Goes down, lashes that one, foul. One ball, two strikes. One on, nobody up. Got him. Bollardi's first strikeout of the afternoon. Right down the middle. Hendrickson couldn't find it. Maggie Enich popped up to short back in the second. Reaches out, foul with that one, a whistler almost back in my direction. Almost had me ducking back here. Good thing there's a chain link fence between me and the field of play. Otherwise, we might have been going announcerless. Here are some folks back in the truck getting some ideas. No balls, one strike. And that one on the infield bounces beyond Baladai and everybody's safe. Infield single by Enich. Applause all the way around from Washington. Not very well hit, but just got enough. Get it past Baladai in the set in the, in the circle. So two on and one out. With Lily Viola grounded out to second. And her first plate appearance. Skies this one to right field. Caracas makes the grab. Tag it up, heading over to third. She won't get there. Third, end of the inning, and what a throw from right from Caracas. A high fly ball, Caracas able to track it down, and now watch this throw, and a picture-perfect relay. Philippines humming on all cylinders. <laughs>
Want to play Little League baseball or softball? It's easy. Visit playlittleleague.org, enter your address, and find the Little League program near you. If you're here in Kirkland, there is one. There's also one in Redmond, which is four miles away from where we are. You're seeing them right now. They have taken the field for the top half of the fifth inning. Right now, they've got a lot of work to do with the Philippines ahead 9-0. The Philippines have scored in every inning, one in the first, two in the second, three in the third, and then three more in the fourth. That's Casey Roosh. Checking with home plate umpire Mike Fultz. I have a feeling we might have a change or two. But the fans from Redmond in the house and saluting their schoolmates, teammates, friends. Nice to be the, the home team here in this event. Oh, watch your step. Sarah Enich, who came in and pinch hits and stayed in and was thrown out at third to end the fourth inning, staying in the game, replacing Ella Carter in left field. Go through the mandatory play rules. Everybody on the roster gets a chance to play. It's part of the one of the many great things about Little League. You get a chance to play either defensively or you get a chance to, to see an at-bat. If a manager refuses or fails to insert a player into the lineup, that means an immediate ejection of the manager and removal without replacement for the remainder of the international tournament. That part of that rule came into effect just a few years ago. Swing and a miss. That's nice libretto. It's batting in Jenny Cabanera's spot. Labrito pinch hit went 0 for 1 this morning against South Carolina. Reaches out, puts this one in play. Can anyone get there in time? Not quite. So Labrito with the nice hit. Couldn't resist, sorry. But she reaches with a single. 12th hit today for the Philippines. Mel no, Baladai still in. 0 for 3, looking for her first base hit of this game. A couple of strikeouts swinging. And the strikeout looking in the fourth. But Baladai has. Seen work in the circle, taken over for Palzario in the fourth. Inside, up and throwing, but not on the bag. Asaigan was ready to go with the throw, but Hendrickson was not on the bag. One and one. Get something off of it, swing and a miss by Baladai. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> Got her. The off speed tailing away. That's a swing and a miss. Well, Perez has, has had moments since coming on in the second inning and replacing Addie Roosh in the circle. She's had some moments where she's been in full command. That sequence in the fourth inning in which five consecutive batters were allowed to reach, one of them was on an error, so that wasn't exactly her fault, but she's also had that on her resume so far today, too. Changes continue for the Philippines. As Fraulein Manalo coming in. Manalo went one for three, drove in 
the run on the RBI ground out against South Carolina this morning. It's Josie Sabunga turning to her subs in this top half of the fifth. So we'll get to see Audrey Sarsona or Isel Tanaban. So far, this one, those are the two left on the, on the Philippines bench. Sarsona and Tanaman. Still left to go. The 0-1 off the fist foul, nothing at two. Well, we get questionnaires from each of the players from all the teams, all 10 teams, and they give us, you know, their favorites, things they want us to know about them. As the 0-2 on the way, hit on the ground. Throw the second for one, throw the first, not in time. So the burrito is erased on the fielder's choice at second, but she stays on the base paths with two gone. Well handled at third by Maggie Enich. Able to get one of the two outs they would have loved to get. But we mentioned the questionnaires that all the players fill out. They give us their favorites, great moments in their life, things they like to do, things they, they like to, to do away from the sport. And this is my third year doing Little League World Series events. So I've seen my share of questionnaires. Mia Perez's questionnaire was just absolutely incredible. Fantastically detailed answers to everything, just super thoughtful on just about every question possible. I, I really enjoyed reading her, her questionnaire. As Perez deals, that's what's off the fist, stays in fair territory, and the throw the first in time for the out. And for the first time today, the Philippines go through a half inning and do not score. Nine nothing with the bottom of the fifth in just a moment. Field number one at Evers Park in Kirkland, Washington. The Junior League Softball World Series, day number one, wrapping up with this contest. Philippines ahead, 9-0. They've been in control pretty much from the start. They've gotten some help, six errors committed by Washington, but certainly the Philippines have certainly earned their opportunities as well, wrapping on 12 base hits. Scoring nine runs so far in this one. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Washington coming close, but just not quite getting anything across to this point. Leo Baladai in the circle. She came in at the, at the start of the fourth inning. 
after Althea Key Palzario through the first three. Struck out five, walk two. Back to the top of the Washington batting order we go to begin the home half of the fifth inning. You saw Ainsley Barcolo about to step in to the box. Josie Sabunga taking this opportunity to make sure that everyone gets a chance to play. With Andre Sarsona coming in and playing second. Replacing Princess Maisie Torre. Here's Audrey. Audrey went one for one in the pinch hit performance this morning. And here we go. Barcolo leading off, bottom half of the fifth. Looks at strike one. Barcolo singled in the first, later advanced to second on an error. Later flew out to right in the third. No balls, one strike. Fouled off. Barcolo down quickly, no, nothing in two. Barcolo's dream job, an infectious disease specialist. How about that? We've certainly needed those over the last couple of years. And I'm uh, certainly grateful for all of their efforts to get us closer and closer back to daily normal life every day. The O1. Yeah! Got her looking. Called strike three. I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but it worked. Not sure if that just slipped out. But man, caught the outside corner and got Barkalo looking. Holiday with a super slow pitch. Fly ball center field. Bayhawks back in the game, makes the catch. Two outs. Katie Seigen, now the batter for Washington. Struck out in the first, singled in the third. Ended up coming around to second in that third inning, but was stranded there. It's been one of the stories for Washington. Smacked, handled, well done. Caballero, a throw to first in time for the out. Caballero with the hot shot, flashing the leather, and finishing out the frame. Philippines with a lot to cheer for after five.
Little League Sandlot Fun Days is a player-led, unstructured opportunity for local Little League programs to provide a fun activity for baseball and softball players. Kids make the rules, make the lineups, and make the calls. Give them the bats, balls, and field, and let them play. Learn more today at littleleague.org slash sandlot fun days. Uh, youngsters having fun here this afternoon as the sun is setting here in Kirkland. A hot day. We got up to 95 degrees. We cool off a little bit from that. So that's certainly good news. Coming a pleasant evening here in Kirkland. Audrey Sarsona stays in the game as she came in as a defensive replacement for Princess Maisie Torrey. She reaches out and taps that one. It gets down for a base hit. So one pitch, one hit for Sarsona. And a nice little swing, pretty easy. Just tapping it. Shallow center field. On Diana Buenafe, singled and scored in the fourth. Reaches out, puts this one in play off of Barcolo. Thought about taking third, trying to get back to second, and just does. Well, Sarasona took a wide turn around second. Thought about trying for an extra 60 feet. But then saw where the ball really was. Viola got the throw to second. Sarasona able to get back just in time. And that was close. She just got back in. Error on Barcolo, the seventh tonight for Washington. Casey Rouge, the Washington manager, up and out of the dugout. He wants to have a word with Ian Tira, the second base umpire, to make sure that he really thinks Arizona got back into second base safely. I'm sure Ian will say, Yeah, I, I had a pretty good view of it. I had a pretty good look at it. Casey will say, Are, are you sure? Are, are, are you really sure? Tell, take, take me through it. Tell me everything you saw. And we'll probably say, well, you know what? I thought she got back in safely. I was able to, to get back in before, before the tag. Now, that being said, we might take a closer look at this. We will too. Was she in before the tag? It appears so. Sarasona took a swipe to the nose. Lost her helmet along the way, but it does appear that she was in, got that front foot back in before the tag was applied. Umpires talk it over. And they will talk it over with Casey Roosh. And they are going to look for video proof. Fultz, the home plate umpire, dons the headset. After the close play at second, in which Sarsono was ruled to have gotten back to second after taking a wide turn and trying to head for third. Sarsona still staying put at second. We'll show you what we've got once more. We think it's pretty decisive that Sarsona got back in before the tag. There's the foot. There's the tag. From the reverse angle. And she's in. It seems from the video that we have looked at that the call on the field should stand. All the wonderful things you could do with modern technology these days. Mike Foltz confirms, safe at second. Well, meanwhile, lost in all this, Philippines poised to add more runs. First two batters reaching, a single by Sarsona, and Wanafa reaching on an arrow. The punt. Go to first in time for the out, but everybody else moves up 60 feet. 
So the sack punt by Bejos. Moves everybody over. Both runners in scoring position for the Philippines. That was well done by the Washington infield. Nice play by Maggie Enich. Smile on her face after it's all done. Well, drop whatever you're doing and watch. Here comes Claire Olarte. Single, double, triple, and reached on an error. Has driven four today and scored twice. Swing. This is strike one. Olarte says, I got you. Nothing in one. Reaches out and puts that one into left field. Catch made. Runner tagging. 10 nothing. So maybe not Olarte's flashiest at bat, but one that could loom very large as now it's a 10 run game here in the top of the sixth inning. Sona coming across, accepting congratulations from her teammates in the dugout. Christine Jane Caracas looking to add some more. That was a runner in third with two out. Caracas walked in the second, an RBI single in the third. Flew out to left in the fourth inning, back at her last plate appearance. Change up again from Perez. This one starts outside and stays outside, 2-0. Oh. Mia Perez has been to Prague, which is in the Czech Republic. And of course, the Europe-Africa region champions are from the Czech Republic. So she was looking forward to meeting the players from that country. One of the fantastic things about this event, bringing kids together from, from all over the planet. They get to hang out, make friends, part of something special. High strike call, three and one. Three balls and one strike. Outside, ball four. First walk issued by Perez today. Jenny Cabanero was pinch hit for in the fifth inning. Nice burrito delivered with the single. Cabanero came back in, made a Nice defensive play to end the fifth. Can hit for power. Swings and misses. Runner headed down to second. And she beats the tag. So Caracas is in with the stolen base. Buenafa stays put at third. What a surprise that she stayed at third in that sequence. She might have had an open path to taking home base, home plate. And Diana showing some discretion. One ball, one strike. Foul off. One and two. Caballero would love to visit California. Well, we're on the, the same coast anyway. About a two hour flight from here. At least an hour and a half flight, rather, from here down to the Bay Area. Maybe two and a half down to LA. Count remains at one and two. She would love to visit California. I'm pretty sure she's pleased to be here in Washington. Especially now with her team ahead 10-0. 
especially considering the heartbreaking loss the Philippines suffered this morning. One and two, waits on it, in foul ground, and the snow cone grab, Hendrickson hangs on. But a big run for the Philippines comes across on the sack fly RBI from Olarte, 10 nothing, and Washington trying to extend the game. Side. 10 nothing the Philippines. It hasn't been a snoozer for the Asia Pacific region champs. Something wake him up. <laughs> a long day, I realize, but but still. Philippines ahead 10 nothing. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It is a run rule situation. As if Washington does not score in this half inning. Philippines will win 10-0 in a run roll situation in six innings. Jose Sabungo would love to see that. Washington with other ideas. It begins with Addy Roosh. Roosh struck out in the first, walked in the third. Baladai deals a whistle that misses outside for ball one. Well, the Philippines have left 11 runners on base. And normally when you're doing things like that, you're really kicking yourself a bit. But they've been bailed out a bit by the Washington defense, which has committed seven errors. And they've also made the most of their own opportunities, for the most part. As the outside corner is called, strike one. One ball and one strike now to Roosh. Philippines able to hit a gear in this game tonight that they were not able to reach this morning. One and one. Fly ball to the right. Caracas in the shade. One away. Plenty of shade in right field. A little bit in the left, a little bit in center as well, but the sun clearly behind us here at field number one, at Everest Park. So the sun probably not a factor on that play. Megan Conley is coming to the plate. Pinch hitting in Mia Perez's spot. Our first look at her in this one. Still have yet to see Savannah Stairs and Zoe Cooper, I believe, by, by my reckoning. Swing and a miss, strike one by Conley. This is her first season playing softball. She has proven that she can make contact, and when she does, Drives the ball quite far. 
Washington back in rally mode. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Jaya has retired five in a row. Make it six in a row. Strikeout swinging. There it is. And Washington down to its final out. With Savannah stairs. Grabbing a bat. Andrew Vulcan, now batting number two, Savannah Stairs. So stairs in the game. And her first plate appearance. Swings and misses on the tail and fastball. Nothing in one. Savannah has a birthday coming up. On Wednesday, she'll be turning 14. So really happy birthday to Savannah. That one floats. Nothing in two. And that's in slow motion. It didn't look much faster in regular speed. No balls and two strikes. Got it. Swing and a miss. And that's your ball game. The Philippines scoring early, scoring often, and getting a big run rule win. The final score, the Philippines 10, Washington 0. Philippines, 10 runs, 13 hits, and one error. Washington, no runs, four hits, and seven errors committed. And the Philippines gets the split, getting redemption after a tough loss this morning to South Carolina, but a big win here in the evening against Washington. This was fun. We hope you had as much fun as we did. On behalf of our fantastic ESPN Plus crew, I'm Troy Clary. Thanks you, you so much for much for joining us here today as we put the wraps on day one of the Junior League Softball World Series, the Philippines 10 and Washington 0.